Hey guys, in this video, I'm talking about my experience with intermittent fasting, how I use it to improve my health and control my weights and my cravings and how it works for me. I only do a 14 to 16 hour fast with once or twice a month, a 12 hour fast, and maybe once or twice a month, a 16, 17 or 18 hour fast. And I did read the book, Fast Like a Girl, which I do kind of follow. Here's a little background on me. Earlier this year, I did about six months on a GLP-1 weight loss medication. During my time on that medication, I did reach my goal weight. I lost 34 pounds and I really wanted to spend my time on that medication, making some sustainable lifestyle changes that I knew I could continue off of the medication. So I did get off of the medication a few months ago and I have been successfully maintaining off of the medication and Probably the biggest tool in my box is intermittent fasting. This has been such a game changer to me. It has been so incredibly helpful to me. I am someone who naturally off my GLP-1 medication, thinks about food a lot, and would be prone to overeating. Without purposely doing intermittent fasting, I would probably eat as soon as I wake up, eat every at least two to three hours throughout my day, eat a snack before bed, and eat way too many calories. Intermittent fasting for me, it stops my eating after dinner. I usually eat dinner around six, so I am done eating for the day by around 6.30. And then I usually shoot for around 15 hours. Now, if I'm starving, I'll go ahead and eat a little earlier. If I can push it, I might push it a little later. So I would say normal for me to start eating would be around 9.30. In the evenings, if I have eaten, a high protein, well-balanced daily food intake, then the evenings usually aren't that hard. So I do have to just avoid the kitchen, close the pantry door, try not to go in there. I do drink water during this time. I may do some calorie-free herbal non-caffeinated teas or a sparkling water. If I really have the munchies, this happened last night, my kids wanted a snack after bed, which is fine, they're kids. But I was like in the kitchen with food everywhere, you know? Um, I just stuck some gum in. <laughs> and so chewing gum kind of made me like chill out and like think less about the food and that like I just wanted something. In the morning, I could easily eat the second I wake up, but instead I do my morning routine, I get ready for the day, I have a tall glass of water, then I have a cup of black coffee, and then I do some sort of activity, whether that is go to the gym or if it's one of my in-office work days, I drive to the office, get settled, um, or maybe do an activity with my kids if it's one of my home days. So I just try to stay busy till nine or 10 um, and then eat breakfast. And when I eat breakfast, I always should make sure to have some protein in it. Hopefully some fiber too, that really helps with satiety. I try to have a, kind of a decent breakfast. So if I have like just, you know, a fiber bar or like something without protein or just something that's only 100 calories and then i am kind of starving like an hour later so i try to have a decent breakfast and then a couple hours later it's time for lunch um, i try to have a decent lunch with protein and hopefully fiber and decently healthy and then i do usually want like a, a little afternoon snack and a couple hours later i have dinner and then i'm done eating so by just putting my eating intake into that eating window, I was able to eliminate a bedtime snack, which could sometimes be 500 calories. Um, I pushed my start of eating later. So that eliminated like a full meal because before I would kind of eat like breakfast, sometimes second breakfast times slash snack, uh, lunch, snack, dinner, um, and then a snack after that. So I eliminated two big snacks basically, which is at least like 500 calories. If I'm eating decent meals, so decent fiber and protein meals, then I'm really not that hungry throughout the day. I have less food noise. I'm not obsessing about food as much. I'm also allowing myself to eat. I'm still eating three full meals a day, which I know with intermittent fasting, intermittent fasting can mean so many different things to different people. For some people that means like one meal a day. 
The Fast by a Girl book labels intermittent fasting as 14 to 16 hours, and that's generally what I stick with. Now, I do change it a little bit according to my cycle. So I have a semi-regular cycle. I generally kind of know what's going on with my body. So the day or two before my period and the day or two I start my period is by far the hardest time to do this, just absolutely the hardest. But knowing the science behind what's going on in my body, my body's producing a lot of progesterone during that time. So I kind of need to tone it back because it maybe needs a little more nutrients and it maybe needs a little more carbs. And I do crave carbs, but I try to have the healthy carbs. I mean, I have some chocolate during this time because if I don't, I'm gonna like punch a wall. When normally I do kind of avoid sweets, but tracking my cycle has been really helpful for this. And so during that time, if I at least do a 12 hour window, which I know some people would totally do naturally, I probably wouldn't. I would probably eat at 10 p.m. before bed and then wake up at seven and eat again. So I try to at least still do 12 hours during that hormonal cycle time. And then a few days after I start my period, it becomes very easy again because my body's not producing as much progesterone and it's producing a lot of estrogen. And so longer fasts are easy, which is great because sometimes I've gained a couple pounds from my hormonal, less shorter fast, carb heavy days. And so I can go <laughs> with those longer drawn out, maybe up to 18 hour fasts during that time of the month. So I do adjust it. And then the rest of the month, I'm usually generally around 15 hours between 14 and 16. I'm a little intuitive with it. If I am absolutely starving at 14 hours, I'll go ahead and eat. If I at 15 hours, I'm still fine. Um, I'll just go ahead and push it to 16. I do regularly lift weights and work out while fasting. It's my preference to work out in the morning while fasting. I feel like a million bucks when I do that. I don't feel great when I have food in my belly while I'm working out, like especially if I'm doing like Pilates or weightlifting or something. I do some sort of strength training three times a week. I love it when I can do a strength training while doing fasting. I just can like feel the fat burn. It's great. I don't feel weak or dizzy or anything as long as I'm really well hydrated. So I think it's just really important to be drinking plenty of water during that time. And then I usually eat afterwards. Intermittent fasting it definitely helps me control my weight. It helps me limit my eating. It helps me limit my calories. I think it's one of the biggest reasons why I have been able to successfully maintain off my GLP-1, which is really, really hard for a lot of people, which not everyone will be able to do. I totally get that. Um, besides just weight management, it can also help with hormone levels, regulate insulin levels, lead to cell repair, reduce inflammation. All of those were so helpful to me as well. I was struggling with all of those things before my GLP-1 weight loss. I, my face was so puffy and inflamed. My hormones were not regular at all. Um, I was having really irregular, heavy cycles. And I was overweight, really, really struggling with food cravings. So for me, I think this definitely has improved my health. I think another reason I'm able to be successful with the intermittent fasting is because of the nutrition I have in my eating window. I try to have a protein and fiber with every meal. And if I need to have a snack, healthy snacks, I have recently pulled in on the protein a little bit. I did one of those gut health tests and it told me that um, I was eating so high of protein that it was upsetting my microbiome a little bit. And I was eating like 100 grams a day. So now I try to eat more like 80 and not go crazy with the protein supplements, like a protein bar, or protein fiber, if I'm already eating like protein heavy meals. But that really helps with satiety. That helps me not obsess with food as much. I would say there is this one drawback. I have heard that if you have black coffee in the morning on an empty stomach and then go out your day, it can kind of tank your cortisol levels, which can be true for me. The coffee crash without food can be intense some days. So if I can, I just wait to have coffee until it's time to have food. I can't always do that because I just like need to have coffee first thing in the morning. So I just try to, after my coffee, have lots of lights on. If I go to the gym right after coffee, I'm usually fine. I don't usually tank from the coffee crash. But if I'm home and I have coffee on an empty stomach, I'm not normally like dying from hunger. I more just like have like the caffeine crash like so hard, which I think is also like a cortisol crash. But also like chewing gum can kind of help that and kind of wake my brain up and kind of help with that cortisol crash. But if you have any tips for that, let me know. I'm not doing MCT oil anymore. I was doing MCT oil sometimes. That's something you can put in your coffee. Hopefully 
It doesn't um, kill your fast. It can help you feel more full throughout the end of your fast. But I did the Biome Gut Health Test and it told me to watch my uh, cholesterol and everything. So that's probably not the best for me. But some people will do a little MCT oil in their coffee in the morning and that can help them prolong their fast. All right, I hope this video about my intermittent fasting routine and lifestyle was helpful to you. I'd love to hear what you do. Do you do way longer fasts? Are you like me and you just do the 14 to 16 hour thing? How has it been helpful to you? Let me know any tips you have, especially if anyone has any tips about that coffee crash, cortisol fatigue in the mornings because I'm still trying to figure that one out. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Remember to subscribe if you have not already and I will see you in my next video.